Grant, well, number 10 ranking, main event. I mean, I know you've been working towards moments like this, bigger ones in play in the future, but, I mean, this is a big moment, right? What's, what's the feeling like for you as it's all playing out? Uh, it feels natural, man. Um, I, I keep saying this th throughout this whole week. Like, I've wanted to be a UFC world champion from day one. So if I want to be a UFC world champion, I have to know that these kind of moments are going to happen, and they're great, and I'm so happy that they're finally starting to get here, but this was supposed to happen. I'm supposed to be in a main event. I'm supposed to be uh, doing this kind of thing, and now I get to show the UFC that you can put me in a main event, and I can perform. I can go all five rounds if need be. This Everything that I've worked for is finally coming to fruition. Yeah, I like it. You know, like I said, you've been on this trajectory for a while, right? You get to this moment, this main event, um, the matchup may be a little bit surprising. Did you I mean, were, were, did, you, did it make sense to you? Were you excited about it? What, what did you think? I mean, matchups don't make any sense to me anyways. And, and I'm not a real big, like, anything outside of the champion is just suggestion. The, the rankings change every single day. And if he beats me on Saturday night, then the matchmaking wasn't that weird, you know? Uh, I, I'm taking Bobby very, very seriously. I know how good he is. And I'm going to be honest with you, I think that, a win over Bobby Green does more for my career than a couple of wins over some other guys in the top 15. I just think that he's got that big of a star power. Um, he's that big of a veteran, and I'm expecting the best Bobby Green on Saturday night. Nice, well said. Uh, I think most people that are breaking down the fighter seeing it as a clash of styles, right? I mean, he's known as a striker, you're known as a great grappler. I mean, I don't want to oversimplify things, but I mean, is that kind of what you see as well? Uh, yeah, it, it is a little bit like, I know you're not, but it is a little bit oversimplifying it because he can wrestle. He had a very good wrestling background, and we've seen in his past fight, even in his last fight, uh, he was out wrestling Tony Ferguson. So taking him down, he's not going to be blown out of the water on the ground. If I can't get the takedown, I'm not going to be blown out of the water striking. We're both very good in each other's strengths, but that's what makes this fight so, so much fun. Who is going to be able to dictate what happens in this fight? Yeah. You mentioned the possibility of like proving you can go five rounds if need be. Is there any slight part of you that like wants to go five rounds, like just to get the experience? I know that almost sounds bad to say that ahead of a fight, right? Because fans want to see finishes, but that's a big moment, right? To go a full five in the UFC. Right. Uh, I do not want to go five rounds, <laughs> but there will be positives if we do go five rounds and I can perform how I know I normally perform. Because for some reason, people think that I have bad cardio. I've had bad cardio in one single fight. One fight. I got tired, and all of a sudden, I'm a gasser for life. So if I were able to go five rounds with Bobby, keep the pace that I know I can keep, at least we would be able to shut those guys up. I don't know if you had a chance to see it. He sent a pretty direct message to you when he was here a little bit earlier, saying kind of to keep the same energy that you had while filming a promo, I believe, uh, you know, saying some things that were like, oh, I'm ahead of you, like, look, here we are. And I haven't seen the promo exactly, but um, he said he wants to make sure you keep that same energy because he feels like it's his job to make a boring fighter seem exciting on Saturday night. Do you have any response to that message? What do you think when you hear that he said that? Man, you know, Bobby can't fool me. He's a good guy. He's a really nice guy, and uh, uh, he was really nice to me back when I was in high school. I don't know if you guys heard that story, but uh, he, I know that he's a nice guy, and I'm, I'm really glad that he's trying to sell this fight. So I appreciate it, Bobby. What's the story from high school? So my, other than watching UFC fights, my favorite thing to watch was um, uh, Bully Beatdown. And I messaged, I was a kid, I messaged every single bully beatdown guy, and I just wanted to know, is it all scripted, or is it, like, is it a real thing? Obviously, like, some of it's scripted, but is the fight, like, real? Do you actually fight somebody? The only person that reached back out to me was Bobby Green. He reached out to me, and he said, yeah, it, it's real, man. Like, I got to beat up a kid. And I was like, dude, that's so cool. <laughs> and then he, he had something nice to say about, like, you know, keep, keep working for it. I, I can't remember totally. This was, like, almost 10 years ago, so... Uh, I know Bobby Green is a nice guy, but I appreciate him trying to sell the fight. That's a great story. Last thing for me, you mentioned the trajectory, the ultimate goal, right? And you even said, I think maybe this win gives me more than some of the other guys around would give me. So where do you go with this? I know you said anything from a championship doesn't matter. It's just kind of suggestion. But do you see the path? Do you see the names? Do you see, you know, the number of fights it'll take for you to get there? Right now, the only thing that matters is getting through Bobby Green because if I lose – to Bobby Green on Saturday night, all of that goes away. Not forever, but it goes away for a while. So the biggest thing for me is just to stay focused, 
focus on on beating Bobby Green and doing what I know I can do. Um, after that, we will have some names, but like I said before, I, I come up with names that I'm going to call out, but they're for different scenarios. If I go out and win a split decision, I'm not going to be calling for Islam Makhachev. If I go out and dominate, if I'm the first person to ever sub Bobby Green in a fight, then we can start talking about the bigger names. I've got three names in mind. We'll see how the fight plays out. Hey, Grant. Um I remember you saying that uh, you wanted your nickname to be King, right? And now you're fighting the King. So it's just, it's just kind of weird how it all kind of sh shaped up. Yeah, I mean, it, it's like a TV show, you know? Like, the, the whole MMA community is like one big Tiger King TV show. It's just amazing if you step back and look at it. Uh, I wanted my nickname to be King Grant Dawson. And before I was in the UFC, I, I said, no, I'm going to do KGD because there's already a King in the UFC, and that's Bobby Green. However, when I win the UFC World Championship, I will change my name to King Grant Dawson. Um, and then also, like, you know, Ricky Glenn's fight on this card. He's the reason why you moved to ATT. It's, it's, just, it's just all kind of like, it's like this card's kind of like made for you, right? Yeah, it, it's nuts. Uh, Drew Dober, who was just in here, really good friend of mine, um, and we were just talking. He was at my amateur debut. Uh, Drew Dober, I'm talking, was at my amateur debut, my pro debut, like, We've, we've kind of grown up in the sport together, you know, and, and now he's on this card. He also fought Bobby Green. Like, it's just, the, if I'm a conspiracy theorist, it's like all the red dots, like, just connecting. It, it's really kind of a cool card if you know the story behind every fighter on it. Uh, and that's one of your thoughts on the rematch between Islam and Charles. Do you see the fight going the same way? Is it going to be a little different? Like, what are your thoughts on it? Short answer, Islam wins again. Long answer, it's a much more competitive fight this time. 99% of the uh, nerves um, going into a fight is the unknown. I don't know how strong this guy is. I don't know how fast this guy is. Charles knows all of that. Also, Charles has nothing to lose. He's going to go in against a guy that's already beaten him. He can do nothing but look better against Islam in this next fight. One more thing, Islam has looked mortal. Islam has looked like a, a real person against a 45er. So it kind of shows the division that, yes, he's really good. Yes, he's the best in the world, but he is beatable. And there are guys out there that can beat him. And somebody like Charles Oliveira could get it done. Would you be shocked if, if we read that he got a guillotine win? Like, he's got one of the best guillotines in the game. So I think Islam still wins, but it's a much more competitive fight. And then finally for me, I just want your thoughts on Gamrot's win. Obviously, the fight only went two rounds, but how do you, like, what do you think of his – performance leading up to the, fin uh, the finish? I thought he had a great performance. I, 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 I hate to see people trashing on a guy like Gamrot. One, because he's such a good guy. And two, like, he's fighting the guys that nobody wants to fight. I've never seen anyone call out Fazeev or Armin Sarukian, and he called out both of them and beat both of them. And I think that he doesn't get the credit that he deserves. I think he's number six right now. If I'm not mistaken, he should be three or two. I, I really believe that. He's one of the best in the world, especially with the guys that he's beaten. Awesome. Thanks, Grant. Grant, over here. Um, you mentioned you have three potential names to call out. If the fight goes the exact way you want it to go, who is the first string out of those three picks? Dan Hooker. And who are the other two? Uh, Matt Favola. Oh, um, uh, Diego Fajeda. Awesome. And, uh, I mean, obviously talking about Gamrot, he was here not too long ago after his post-fight win. He mentioned that he'd like to see um, or Johnny Eblen, an American top team a teammate, fighting the UFC. I mean, what, what's your take on that? Would you like to see him come uh, make the switch? Johnny Eblen is the best 185-pound fighter on planet Earth, and that is a hill that I will die on. I think that he beats all of them, and it's not even close. That dude is the best 85-er on planet Earth. He walks through Izzy. I've seen him and Sean spar. I know you're not supposed to talk about the gym, and I usually have a very strict rule about that, but I'm going to tell you right now that Johnny Eblen is the best 185-pound fighter on planet Earth today. Thank you. I, I, there, there's rumors. I don't know if this is true. There's rumors that Bellator is going under, and there's a very large part of me that hopes they do, just so we can see Yaroslav and Johnny Eblen in the UFC. You think they'll both have belts around their waist? Yes. Thank you. Thanks, guys.